In this example, we're going to calculate the net electrostatic force that's acting on one of the point charges due to the other two point charges. Determine the net electrostatic force on point charge number two as a result of the other two point charges. Assume that all point charges are stationary. So let's begin by looking at the following diagram. So we have point charge number one, point charge number two, and point charge number three. Now the distance between these two point charges is given by this variable which is 3 meters and the distance between these two point charges given by this variable is 4 meters. Now the quantity of charge of this point charge is positive 10 microcoulombs. This point charge has negative 12 microcoulombs of charge and the third point charge has 2 or positive 2 microcoulombs of charge. So let's begin by drawing the force diagram, the free body diagram for point charge number two. And that's shown in the following diagram. So we have two forces acting on point charge number two. We have the force that is a result of this point charge given by this vector and the force on this point charge as, as a result of the third point charge. So force acting on point charge number two as a result of point charge number one and force acting on point charge number Number two as a result of point charge number three. Notice that they are perpendicular to one another. So let's begin by applying Coulomb's law for each one of these forces. Force acting on two due to one is equal to the product of K, our constant, the charge of point charge number two, Q2, and the charge of point charge number one given by Q1. And we divide that by the distance between them squared. So K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons multiplied by meter squared divided by coulomb squared. And we multiply by the charge of Q2 and Q1. Now these should be given in coulombs. So we have to convert from microcoulomb to coulomb. So we multiply each one of these by 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So we have 12 times 10 to the negative 6. So there should be a multiplication sign here. So 12 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulomb is the charge in Coulombs of charge number 2. We multiply that by 10 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulombs, the charge of point charge number 1. And we, mult and we divide that by the square of this distance given to be 3 meters. So we calculate that and we get 0 0.120 newtons. Now what about this force? So force acting on point charge 2 as a result of point charge 3 is equal to K multiplied by Q2 multiplied by Q3 divided by the distance between them squared. So our K remains the same, our Q2 remains the same, and Q3 is 2 microcoulombs, so 2 multiplied by 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And we divide that by this distance squared, so 4 meters squared. We plug that into our calculator and we get 0.0135 newtons is the force as a result of this point charge acting on this point charge. Now, by the way, because these two charges are opposite charges and these two charges are opposite charges, the forces will be attractive forces. So we'll have one up force and one force to the right. Now, what is the net force acting on this object, on this point charge? Well, the net force is simply found by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the forces acting along each axis, one along the x-axis and one along the y-axis. So, the net electrostatic force acting on point charge number two is equal to the square root of the sum of these two forces found in this part. So we plug in our quantities. So 0 0.120 newton squared plus 0 0.01 
three five newton squared we take the sum we square root and we get about 0 0.121 newtons so this is the magnitude of our force now what about direction remember forces have direction as well as magnitude so to find the direction we simply have to find the inverse tangent of the following ratio so our force that points along the y-axis divided by the force pointing along the x-axis so we simply plug in our quantities so this represents our y component force and this represents our x component electrostatic force so uh, the inverse tangent of 0 0.120 newtons divided by 0 0.0135 newtons gives us approximately an angle of 83.6 degrees. So this angle is with respect to the x-axis. So that means the net force will point somewhere along this direction. The angle that it will make with respect to the x-axis will be 83.6 degrees and the magnitude of that of that net electrostatic force is given by this quantity 0 0.121 newtons